guess I'm joining the squad. You can say a lot about Cruelty Squad. It's visuals, aesthetic, sound design, gameplay loop, concepts of world building and level design all stand out in their own way to create a reaction out of anyone who ever sees it in action. And yet, you can also say nothing about the game. It speaks for itself when you touch it for the first time. There are drastically different takes on the same game, all ranging from first impressions to first full playthroughs, but they all share a very similar visceral reaction when you come across it. And that's something you can't say about it. It's not a quiet game whatsoever. I've seen some of my favorite reviewers and streamers come into contact with the game, so I decided to take a look for myself inside the Cruelty Squad world. So I won't waste any more words on this intro, just get straight into the meat of this game. Or flesh in this case. A lot of it. In Cruelty Squad, you play a depressed loser who just got let go from his job at the SEC Death Unit, who gets called by the Cruelty Squad for new work. You pick up your equipment, ranging from a silenced pistol to an animal trank and melee ranged baton, and get sent on your first mission to kill off Sigismund and Jerry of the pharmaceutical department. Fucking Jerry. In what I can only describe as the first of many times the game intentionally deceives you, your boss over the phone tells you that he also made you a special combat cocktail. It may have had some slight side effects while you're working. The reason I say this is because right from the jump, the game bombards you with vibrant migraine inducing colors and off-putting textures across your surroundings. For the simple-minded, like myself, this gives the impression that the only reason why the level looks the way it does is because of this supposed concoction that's in your system now. When you're here, take your time getting your bearings because as soon as you're within the line of sight of one, two, five enemies, the onslaught begins. You're gonna be peeking around corners, trying to crouch around when it actually makes no difference except now you have to jump each step of the staircase and looking for as many headshots as you can to make every round in your pistol count. When you kill your targets in each level in Cruelty Squad, you then have to make your escape to extract and complete the mission. So you go through each level accomplishing this task in a variety of strange and inverted locales that derive from a mix of puke infested waters to strange floating structures in some extraterrestrial space that keeps people trapped inside. Your second mission leads into a much wider open area resembling that of a small neighborhood with a rich live called Paradise. This one stands out as probably having the most secret passageways and areas to explore and find things since it plays with the idea of navigating through multiple buildings and homes. It's also one of the harder ones to sneak around in because by god these guys can definitely differentiate your model from everyone else around that looks completely identical. And to that point, if you can't tell the difference between models of civilians and those of actual enemies, I feel for you. Once you've gotten the grip of studying the models and behaviors of civilians and enemies, it becomes way less difficult of a task telling the difference between them. Um, one tip I've got is to look to see if the model has both their arms to their sides. If their arms are raised up though, more than likely, they're an enemy holding a gun. You're gonna get shot. And uh, to put it bluntly, that's about all you do in this game. Yep, your boss, which we'll get back to him in a second, sends you out to these locales where you need to find your targets, kill them, and get the hell out. Some maps that stand out to me for a mix of good level design, fun traversal, and enemy placements that don't insult the player are Idiot Party, Mall Madness, Seaside Shock, and Office. Some maps like Sin Space Engineering have a cool concept, but so much of the traversal can be chalked up to climb up the side of this pyramid and kill the guy, and never having to do much exploration to find alternative paths or killing a bunch of enemies on your way up. Bog Business is quite literally a bog down in terms of playing the game just because of these little shitheads that poison you and you gotta eat these berries and then sometimes the berries poison you and there's a lot of trial and error. And I mean just look, there's so many of these little fucks. They're so hard to see because they're blending with everything else. It's just not worth going through the trouble of seeing how the map is designed, so I went this way. The casino catastrophe level presents a nice idea of putting in a slot machine that can spew out random weapons on it, even ones that you haven't gotten yet. But a lot of the enemies you have to encounter to reach your target are bottlenecked in tight spaces that make them a non-challenge. Also, you're gonna need the rocket launcher to deal with these rock dudes that'll sometimes come out to play. I guess that's what the slot machine is there for. Cruelty Squad also uses the trope of the home invasion of an assassin by the police, because as it turns out, 
you somehow fucked up at your job of killing targets that the cruelty squad ordered you to kill. Apartment Atrocity has a huge army of cops and weaponized robots infiltrating your apartment complex to hunt you down and kill you. Who better to tell you of this news too than your own boss who, as mentioned earlier, presumes to have drugged you with a cocktail, called you a depressed loser, and now is putting a hit out for you after all the hard work you put in. This would seem like a done deal to make your way down your apartment, gun down everyone in your way, but you also can just do this. See that? Kinda cool. Exiting the level presents you with the debriefing for the next one which reads, Hey, sorry about the last one. Someone fat fingered the social security number of the target and it ended up being you by accident. Just what are the chances? Yeah, yeah, you know the drill at this point. Yeah, thanks, thanks for nothing, I guess, boss. So here we are at Idiot Party. What you'll see underneath your boss's image is a strange message for the mission objective. And in the next mission office, you'll see this too. Uh, I'm not sure how the course of the game led to these things, but you'll soon find yourself in the Archon Grid where your boss tells you you've reached the home stretch and welcomes you to the ultimate punishment. I mean, I guess if I can just swing my way underneath all this crap, shoot maybe one or two dudes, then rip through the final boss's balls, then this ultimate punishment wasn't so bad. Running through the gauntlet the first time around would run you about mm, six to seven hours of your time, which uh, a game of this caliber was actually what I was hoping for. What I wasn't expecting though was everything after our con. When you first boot up the game, your mission select screen will appear pretty empty alongside some question marks, and no matter where you click on any of these icons, whether it's equipment and implants, stock market, your weapon slots, you'll come across even more question marks. This game has a lot of things for you to discover across the many maps you play on. Some secrets are worthwhile to discover, while others just might be this thing, the AS-15, but really it should be named the shits. Whatever it is you end up finding in these levels, they'll slowly but surely start to fill up the question marks you see, and this is where the game gets interesting. It doesn't want to help you in finding the secrets it holds, as it would much rather be trying to throw insane amounts of bullets and traps your way. If you're not into unexpected surprises or things to occur during your normal traversal through a level, then I'd say Cruelty Squad might not be the type of game you want to experience. Personally, going through the base levels in the game was a fun enough experience to warrant the amount of time I spent going through the many different. Within the first map, you come across this white door on the second floor of the main building. The border around your screen in-game matches the color of the door here, we'll touch upon that later. You can freely open this door and gain access to a secret weapon you would normally come across during your playthrough at a la later time. When I was able to gain access to it, I did my absolute best to stay alive while completing my mission. My efforts were in vain, but it was still exciting finding secrets like a passage into a vent or a weapon perched up in a strange spot. I wasn't able to find any of the six secret levels, see these question marks, which are accessible through hidden exits within the normal levels during my 10 hours of playtime recorded so far. So that should give you some general sense of how dense the game is with its exploration and secrets finding. If you've started playing and haven't gone through all the levels yet for the first time, you'll notice that uh, as of right now my border is blue. Some of the maps in the atmosphere around them might be different from what you're experiencing too. I know, generally speaking, I like to explain a lot of the details about a game I cover through personal experience, but in this case, I'm not going to spell it out for you, as you can either figure it out for yourself, how to obtain the border, or you can just look this shit up online, because, I mean, this game is figured out already, just not for me. All I have to really say about that is pay attention to what civilians say to you when you interact with them in Archon Grid. And once you've obtained the blue border, you can adjust your settings back to normal until you decide to switch it up from the blue border. Oh, and uh, before I forget, if you want to obtain new weapons permanently that you find within the levels, you need to exit the levels with them whenever you complete a mission. If you drop a new weapon from your slots before leaving, you won't have it permanently on your selection of weapons. So take what you want and get out when you're done. So across the board, I think I've made it pretty apparent that music within a game always needs to get highlighted within these videos I make. So I want to get this out of the way as clearly as I can when it comes to Cruelty Squad. It's very glitchy, experimental, ambient, almost outsider-ish, and overall dissonant when it comes to most of its tracks. But that's not to say it doesn't have its own fair share of melodies and coherent song structure you can pick up on within the OST. 
but uh, most of what you'll be hearing are a lot of environmental sounds from enemies and a lot of glitchy non-music music. When you speak to NPCs and your boss within the mission overviews, they all have this very low tone and rapid text-to-speech sounding cadence for their dialogue. It's uh, it's it's basically Animal Leaves from Animal Crossing, which is funny considering both games aren't really like each other at, at all. But I mean, I guess the fishing counts as something both games have in common. Which, uh, by the way. A lot of your upgrades in the game are gonna cost a lot of fucking money. Like, you see this whole page? Look at this all, look at all this stuff. Look at this, look at this. You can find 500 or 1000 dollar stashes within some levels, and you also get completion money for missions. After about 3 or so missions, I still could only barely afford a basic upgrade like body armor or a small speed upgrade, which, in the grand scheme of this game's difficulty and massive amounts of deaths, doesn't really amount to much. The first thing I saved up for were the gunk boosters. This game's version of a double jump where you shoot out puke from your heels to grant you that extra boost midair. That thing, that puke booster, costs 10,000, 10k, so I had to make my way through a couple of levels before I got to Sin Space Engineering to obtain the fishing rod in the game. You can get to this island over here either by swimming or by uh, forklift. I'm being serious about that too. Once you've permanently unlocked the fishing rod, you equip it into one of your weapon slots and you bring it with you at the start of each mission. Wherever you can find a body of water, toxic or not, shoot out a line and start catching some fish. After a little while, you can access the fish stock market, which lets you sell the fish that you have at a determined price based on its current value. The value of each fish, they fluctuate in real time, so one second, you could be looking at something going up in value by 0.3 or 0.2, and next thing you know, its value is down by negative 4. And uh, besides fishing, you can also harvest organs from the bodies of civilians or enemies that you kill. The first thing you have to do though after they're dead is making sure their body becomes a bloody mess. You can either kick them when they're already dead into a million chunks of flesh, or you shoot them dead and you have their bodies explode. Approach any one of their body parts within the area and sure enough you'll come across uh, stomachs, kidneys, brains, and even more. Each body part also has their own stock value that will fluctuate over time and you can sell those for cash. Lastly, you can also just do actual investing into companies listed in the game in the normal stock market. Generally speaking, the value of these companies, they'll change depending on where you are in the game and which mission you most recently completed, since they're all kind of involved within the story. So why bring up a whole section about this? Well, look, without any of these implants and equipment, you're shit out of luck with dealing with a lot of the enemies with so little health on your end. Doing office or idiot party without any implants is not going to be easy at all without a couple of them at your disposal. Better yet, I would say the game was never designed to not play with them equipped. If you have a certain upgrade in mind for purchasing, grab your fish, harvest organs, complete your missions, and most importantly, don't die. Because when you die, you'll end up losing money from, you know, your body reconstruction. And if the death sat up enough, you could end up dead and broke without any implants. So, uh, take care of yourself out there, bub. Hey, uh, what's up, boss? Um, look, man, I I'm not really feeling this whole cruelty squad thing, you know? Yeah, the whole thing, you know, the, the grappling hook and the double jumping stuff is cool and all that, but, you know... Oh, this puke coming out of my heels now uh, doesn't really do good on my carpet. And uh, the whole organ harvesting thing, yeah, uh, you might want to get somebody else for that. Because, um, see, I have a dog. Yeah. We'll just say she's uh, carnivorous. So I'm putting my two weeks in. I've covered the general foundation when it comes to what you do in this game in the previous sections, so instead I want to focus on some of the aspects that people take umbrage or have issues with when it comes to playing the game. A lot of people feel that the basic control scheme and mechanics are just a little bit too obtuse. For me, it probably took the most amount of time getting accustomed to the reload in this game. You gotta hold your right mouse button down and you'll see this meter show up, see that? You gotta move your mouse down until it reaches past the line that says reload and then you let go of the right click to reload. If you get really good at it, reloading can be instantaneous. Things from X to crouch, C to change weapons, or R to pick up objects or open doors, 
might be small inconveniences at first, especially if you're used to thinking, you know, C standing for crouch and E standing for interaction. I'd say one of the more underrated keys I've come across when I hear people talk about the game is the F key, which is the kick. You can do the obvious, like kicking doors down, but you can actually use it as a free way to make bodies explode into chunky pieces of flesh and organs. It's important because harvesting organs can make a return within the organ stock market. There's even an implant upgrade that powers your kick up to insane levels, letting you kill just about anything and blow them up. Your crouch button is not the best stealth tool unless an enemy's line of sight on you is literally obstructed by something within the environment. Of course, that means you can't see them either, but with that you can usually use Q or E to peek between your left and right respectively. This doesn't allow enemies to see you if you're in cover, and it gives you an idea of when an opening might occur for you to go around a corner or go for a quick headshot without them alerting others nearby. Nope, don't try to shoot while peeking, because you'll never hit any of your targets. Your actual aiming reticle never stays in one place and looks more like it's trying to find the center of the screen endlessly. This is the best way to get caught out by enemies and have your health depleted in the blink of an eye, which Leads me to my next topic. In Cruelty Squad, your difficulty is determined by one factor. How many times you've died since you've started. From the very beginning, this white border actually signifies the hardest difficulty. So yeah, the game throws you in the deep end right as soon as you start playing. So it's not hard to end up dying a couple of times on your first mission before you get to actually progress forward. When you die for the first time, your divine light, as the game calls it, becomes severed. There's some form of commentary, symbolism, whatever crap, but I I'm not gonna dive too deep into that stuff or else my eyes and my ears will switch places and I'll be bleeding from all pores. And that's just the kind of effect the game leaves on you after you play it through the first time. I mean, just looking at that post-final boss scene is confusing enough. Yeah, I, I don't know what the game's trying to tell me right here. The more you die, the more the difficulty is lowered and certain mechanics get to be introduced into the game to help you out. If you're low enough on the difficulty scale, you can start approaching dead bodies and consuming their flesh to restore one point of health. However, remember how I brought up that white door earlier within my personal experience? Well, if you're not on the highest difficulty, in other words, if you've already died once, you're not going to be able to gain access to that door and the secret weapon there. And the rest of the game is like this too. Certain alternate paths or secrets might be locked out from you gaining access to them if you're not at a certain difficulty or if uh, certain settings within your options are not set the proper way. In this sense, this game can get pretty brutal, but it's also not impossible to beat without finding your own way around these levels and finding the most optimal paths to your target and exit. However, this game does like making the floor underneath you collapse completely at random times. In this small level, I'm thinking I found an alternative route to just approaching these giant enemies with double miniguns, but halfway down this corridor, the f floor just suddenly breaks underneath me. The room I'm in is like completely dark, so I pop my night vision scope on, my assault rifle, and okay, zombies, alright. However, one touch from them and I'm down from 100 health to 50, what the f- and my health just keeps going down and down further and further into a little crack then. You will come across many other moments like this too in other levels, so uh, be prepared to get trolled by this game and these also these uh, tiny toxic fucks. Is that a gun? What the fuck? I hope that I'm not downplaying some of the things discussed in this video that many people either complain or praise about Cruelty Squad. This whole experience was interesting for me. Because this game sometimes throws out unintentionally funny moments and weird dialogue. Yet at the same time, the art, depictions of body mutilation, and often cryptic messaging can leave people not feeling entirely comfortable when playing the game. There were some sounds these enemies would make that would unnerve to no end and sometimes got me wondering, uh, did this dude actually try to make this scary? Because if not, then he's damn good at not trying to freak me out at all. I mean, just the world itself can be pretty creepy and off the wall with its eye-piercing textures and enemy designs. Some people have gone on to compare this game to the immersive sim genre of games like Deuce X or Assassin-style games like Hitman. While this game does provide an experience similar to both, what you're getting is something that is more akin to uh, classic-style shooter games with separate missions. With Deuce X, it's a continuously breathing world where the quests aren't separated by a singular hub menu where you get to select new map from there. It's an open sandbox type of game that has everything interconnected to one another. In Hitman, well, it's third person to begin with, though a lot of the concepts between both first and third person shooters, you know, they coexist, they share very a lot of similarities. 
if you wanted a more apt comparison of what I feel personally, this game definitely has more of like a, a golden eye or a perfect dark type of feel. The only difference is it's not nearly as linear as those games, and the spaces you get to play in are a lot more reminiscent of a Hitman game. However, the shooting, objectives, and implants upgrading can also just as easily make me sound like an idiot for making that comparison. Uh, all in all though, I like my time with the game and this second playthrough is not really any easier than the first, so I'm going to be taking my time eventually finding all the hidden stuff in the world of Cruelty Squad that it clearly doesn't want me to find. If you want something new to absolutely love or absolutely hate, check this game out. Its normal asking price is uh, 20 bucks. I was able to pick it up on sale for, uh, I forget at this point, maybe like 10, 15 bucks. So if you think you can sit on your wallet for the time being until it's on sale again, go for it. Otherwise, 20 bucks is well worth the chance to see how you truly feel about this game. Just uh, beware in case you end up fat fingering cruel TD for two bucks instead. The fuck is this? time I hung up my boots, all the quits. I knew it. I knew you were going to do that. You know, this stupid thing. I'm going to keep going. You don't even need them. You're out. Yeah, but you know, there's a certain level of confidence they give you, you know? Like, Kind of like leaving a mask on. It's like keeping a mask on, you know? Nobody has to know who you really are. And when I was out there doing that work, on the computer, that is, yeah. looking at hellacious shit, right. I didn't have to think about my consciousness, the sort of degeneracy that was gonna develop I just knew I had a job to do, and nobody would know that it was me. But everyone knows. Everyone that's seen your show, so you don't really need to. You really, really don't. Look, all I need right now are these shades and my dog, all right? So, good talk. Look at the fucking outro!